Hi y'all, welcome to Feel and Froggy Knits. Happy 2023, let's knit and chat. say thank you all so much to everybody who has subscribed to my channel after my last video I've been getting some more love I just hit over a hundred on my channel and that video hit over a thousand views in like three days I think which is kind of just bonkers to me I've only been doing this for a month so it just kind of feels a little crazy I don't know hi y'all editing Maya here I just wanted to pop in and say that we are actually almost at 200 subscribers now, which it is currently the fourth and I filmed this on the first. So it has only been a couple of days and it feels a little bit crazy. Thanks y'all so much. Uh, I hope to keep putting out videos that you enjoy watching and yeah, let's, let's go on this little journey together. Okay, back to your regularly scheduled programming. I feel so appreciative for y'all watching. It does feel very validating, I'm not gonna lie, because uh, sometimes you're just talking into a camera and you don't know who's back there, but I've seen some of your guys' comments and they've just been so sweet. So thank you so, so, so much. Okay, let's get to knitting and chatting, knitting and chatting. Before we dive into what we're going to be talking about today, I am currently knitting my second Oslo hat mohair edition by Petite Knit. It is with some sea change fibers yarn, which I talked about in my last video, and then two strands of Rowan mohair. I just decided to kind of go for it. I didn't gauge swatch at all, but it's looking like it'll work as a hat. And I'm just kind of wanting it to be more like big and puffy and not necessarily oversized, but just like I want the fold of it to be very voluptuous. If you can use that word to describe knitting, sure you can. But that is what I will be knitting on today. Grab a cup of something and let's get to chatting about our knitting resolutions. Mm, mm, mm. My first knitting resolution that we will talk about is I want to record every single piece that I create. And what I mean by that is I would like to write down details about each project so that while I'm working on it or when I want to look back to it, I can and it's all succinct and in a nice place. My boyfriend purchased this for me for Christmas. It is by Lane, as you can see written in the back there in that uh, gold foil. But on the front, it says my knitting notes. You saw in the beginning a little bit, but I thought that I would just kind of like go through it right now. It has a couple of things like here is a conversion chart it has the um, metric sizes of 
needles us uk and canadian which i didn't even know that existed but glad to know now that it does and that i have a reference for it let's see centimeters i believe and inches on the pages so that's really helpful right here which i love this we have abbreviations just uh you know a full list which is really nice to just have written down and I hopefully will be carrying this around with me everywhere that I take my knitting. So yeah, you have the date and then the finish date, which like, I don't know how to write that down, but we've got every, I can't read that, but you can probably. But on this side, we've got just some lines and then on the next two pages, they are blank. And then after that is another page for another project. So there's a lot of space to write, to doodle, to design if you're doing that in this notebook, but I'm really excited. I think this is going to help me a lot with my resolution of actually recording down what I am making. And that goes for everything that I make, not just knitting stuff, but we'll talk about that other stuff later. Okay, next, my next New Year's resolution, which might be kind of obvious based on my last video is to use up all of my stash. I would love for 2024 to come around and not have anything in my trunk, in my yarn trunk that I had in 2023. So it's, you know, a lofty goal. I feel like I do have a lot of yarn and I'm kind of a slow, slow maker, slow uh, knitter. It, it does take me a while to get through some pieces I'm, I'm up for the challenge. There's a lot of things that I want to do this year, a lot of new stuff that I want to try, and I'm, I'm ready for a challenge. Next knitting related New Year's resolution is I want to knit cables. I'm actually knitting the, I believe it's the Honeycomb Shawlette by Andrea Mowry right now, and there's kind of like these faux cables that are in the pattern. It's a uh, honeycomb stitch, I believe is what it's called, if you're familiar. Uh, but I've never knitted anything with like big old cables. So I wanna do that. I wanna knit something with like bit, you know, chunky. I'm actually wearing a cable. That's so funny. I'm wearing this cable knit like t-shirt sweater thing that I got, it's cotton. But I wanna make like big chunky cables this year. I just have never done it before and I'm ready to, to broaden my horizons with knitting. I feel like I've been a stockinette queen for the last year and some odd months that, I've, that I have been knitting. Next up, I want to knit a lace pattern. <laughs> Again, with the cables, and honestly, I'll throw this in there too. I want to knit a color work pattern. So those are three skills that I have not yet tried, and those are just all things that I've not really pushed myself to do. I'm currently knitting a pair of socks, which I haven't knit before, and that's something that I had kind of been putting off. So we jumped that hurdle, and I'm feeling really good. I'm I'm feeling competent, I'm feeling, which is always nice to feel competent when you're doing your, you know, your craft that you love. Oh, I want to buy less yarn. This is more geared towards, I have a tendency of buying yarn when there are sales, which really, if you were looking, there will always be a sale. I just need to cool it with the yarn buying and be more intentional. As I said in my previous video, I really like to buy yarn with a pattern already in mind, which means before I go onto a website or before I go to a store, I already have what I need, the exact meterage and everything. And I feel like I've been kind of delving away from that. I've purchased mohair to match yarn that I didn't have with me. So it was kind of a gamble on whether or not it would match. I bought just a a skein of yarn for a pair of socks, which I know isn't crazy, but it's just not how I like to purchase it. And it doesn't make me feel better about my purchases, if that makes sense. It just, I like to do it a certain way and it makes me feel good to do it a certain way. I just want to, honestly, I want to buy less anyway, just because I started knitting because I wanted to get away from this like very consumerist idea of clothing. I just want to be consuming less. And actually my next resolution kind of goes along with the buying less yarn is that I want to create my first project using 
quote-unquote harvested yarn is what I'm gonna call it, meaning that I want to go to a thrift store or some kind of secondhand store and buy a sweater or some kind of knitted garment, unravel the yarn, wash it, wind it up and create something with it. It's something that I've seen done online. I love, I love, love, love to watch people do it. I think it is so cool. I've seen videos. I don't know, have you all seen the video of the, um, he's an older gentleman, retired. He's like, I love knitting. Yarn is too expensive. So I go to thrift stores and buy sweaters and make hats for charity, which is obviously just so cute. <laughs> Jeez Louise. Yeah, so I would love to try it myself if, Y'all have any suggestions on what kind of like sweater to buy if you have done it before? I I never have. I'll probably do my research before just uh, blindly going into it or I'll just blindly go into it maybe. <laughs> Guess we'll see. Yeah, I want to try that this year. I feel like it would be such a fun project and honestly just give me more confidence to just be like, yeah, you don't even need a yarn shop. You can just make, you can create from from something else and make new. I love it. We are at our last knitting resolution. I have a couple of others that are non-knitting related. They are crafting related. Anyways, my last is to be intentional of where I purchase my yarn from. Again, with the sale thing, I have a tendency to black out and just kind of go for it, I guess, <laughs> when it comes to yarn buying. And I want to know where my yarn's coming from. I would love to be more a part of that process, asking questions at my local yarn shop, if I'm buying online, make sure I'm buying from somebody who's uh, producing ethical yarn and just really kind of, again, being more intentional about every single part of the process making sure that I'm not creating pieces that somebody won't like or that I won't wear, being intentional about what I create because this honestly, it, it is a lot of time to be spending on something. At the end of the day, that's all we got y'all is time. So to be spending it doing something like this, you wanna be doing something special. For me, it is buying yarn less often with more care in mind, I guess. If y'all have any of your own knitting resolutions that maybe I didn't touch on that you are going to be keeping, please let me know in the comments down below. I would love to hear your knitting resolutions. I might take some of your ideas. So I started knitting in August of 2021 and Ever since I started knitting, I was watching knitting YouTubers. And so I feel like I have just had the best knitting experience because I've been able to watch all of these people grow and learn and make mistakes and, and all of this kind of stuff that I have been able to learn from just watching them live their life. So I kind of wanted to be that uh, for for y'all and hopefully to be an inspiration. Okay, now we will start on our resolutions that are not necessarily knitting related, but are related to me, to the feeling froggy fam. I will not repeat that, I promise. Here's a little story time. So in September of 2019, I went to Senegal in West Africa. I was a Peace Corps volunteer. That means that I was evacuated in March of 2020 from there. Very sad, but when I was there in January of 2020, one of my New Year's resolutions was to do the splits, which I know you're probably like, why are you a 27 year old wanting to just be able to do the splits willy nilly? And it's, I don't know, it's something that I've always wanted to be able to just kind of drop down and do. I think part of it is because I'm a Leo and I love attention and like, I'm kind of being sarcastic, but also not. I never was like a dancer or did gymnastics or anything that would require me to be flexible in that kind of, I guess, capacity. So this year I went to do the splits. When I was doing it in Senegal, I found like a video that I just did every morning, like a 20 minute stretching video, which stretching is just good for you anyways. Next resolution is to run 10 miles without stopping. Funny thing, I was going to run a marathon this year. I had some medical problems come up in 2022, so I haven't really been able to like train for it, 
but I do want to get back into running and I just think that that is a realistic milestone for me to reach and something that I will definitely be very proud of to run, you know, a double digit amount in a row without stopping. I don't know though. The reason why I wanted to do this video as like a more knit and chat relax is because I wanted the resolutions to like be out there but not be like a here is what I'm going to do. I am somebody who sometimes keeps resolutions, sometimes I don't. I, here's what I would want to happen. I would want you to be like, hey Maya, remember you said this? And then I'd be like, oh no, I didn't do that. And then you would be like, it's okay. And then that is how the interaction would be. Like, I want to be held accountable, but I just don't want you to yell at me, please. <laughs> Next. Okay, so this is more crafting related. I want to learn how to crochet. So I was trying to learn crochet, but what I think happened was I was just starting out learning knitting and I just really probably wanted to keep knitting. And so when I picked up a crochet hook, it felt so foreign to me. I like couldn't find a comfortable way to hold the yarn. I don't know, but this year I'm ready. I want to learn how to crochet. It's something that is very useful especially for like household items like baskets that's truly what i want is to learn how to crochet to make baskets because i'm a basket queen give me a little basket give me a little box to put my little trinkets in me little trinkets that that is me i want baskets and boxes and little trays and everything to put everything in. So I wanna learn how to crochet so I can just make my own. Y'all go to like World Market, 50 bucks for a basket. Well, first I say go to a thrift store. Thrift stores sometimes they have good baskets. If you do want like the more trendy ones, you go to a Target or World Market, something like that. But thrift stores, they can have some, some cute, more like vintage looking baskets, I would say. I don't know. Am I giving off? The Rock vibes today, The Rock, but with a uh, brown, a little neutral The Rock, The Granite. <laughs> oh my God, I'm hilarious. Ah, I almost dropped a stitch. <sighs> my next resolution for 2023 is I want to learn how to sew, which I don't know if you can see, but it's right behind me, isn't it? My sewing machine. My mom got this for me for Christmas. I am so excited to sew. I think I've wanted to sew my whole life and I just have never known. I just think it is the coolest thing ever. Watching somebody create a garment, it is just so much fun. It is so much fun. <laughs> Get it? Man, I got a lot of jokes today, but there she is, ripe and ready to go. Oh, I'm so excited. My boyfriend and I, we actually received, I'm not gonna call it like childish Christmas presents. I would call it childlike. Uh, he got like a telescope. I got a rock tumbler, stuff like that. Um, I haven't had a lot of time to kind of learn how to sew because it's gonna take a while. I believe that is it for all of my resolutions. I did want to chat about a couple of things. One being, what does feeling froggy even mean? I know we are like, this will now be the fifth video on my channel and I have yet to explain what feeling froggy means. Now, if you do not know what frogging means in knitting, uh, it is a term that's used when you pull or rip back your work that you have knitted up. It could be half a sweater, it could be one row, it could be three stitches. Um, but usually it means when you rip back a bunch, that would be frogging or to rip back completely to where you unwind the garment totally. Now, feeling froggy is a term that I believe means feeling... I know is a little bit lewd and crude, but I just love the little play on words and I thought it was funny. And I also love frogs, though so perfect. And you know, ribbit, ribbit, y'all. Yeah, maybe feeling froggy can mean something else. Like feeling, how about like feeling whatever F word comes to mind for that day? Feeling fantastic. 
feeling fragile, feeling funky, feeling freaky. Yeah, anything else I want to chat about? I'm going to put this in here last because maybe I'm going to forget about it, but it is something that I've said I can't do. I've just been feeling so amped up recently about creating that I might in the year of our Lord 2023 try to create a pattern. Who knows what that will be, if it'll happen, but I just kind of want to throw this in here at the end to, again, softly hold myself accountable. Like maybe just a, li a little ooh in there, a little bit, a little baby ooh. Well, it looks like we got a little bit done, I'd say. So I'm actually holding this with two strands of mohair, which I know is like not what the pattern calls for, but I just wanted this hat to be like super extra fuzzy and I just don't think that it'll add like that much weight to it, if that makes sense. Like that much more poofiness, but I want it to be poofy. Like I want it to be kind of like oversized over the ears, kind of a look of earmuffs or there is this lady on Instagram who made this hat pattern where she holds six strands of mohair together and it just looks like a little puff. I think I'm kind of drawing inspiration from that and I just want it to be very like poofy. Maybe I'll like brush out the mohair. Let's see if I can find. Of course, when I want to find it, I can't. Oh, it's me fearing is I assume the designer and it's called Spectacle Strip. Spectac Spectacle Strip. Here's the Instagram. Here is the hat. Oh my gosh. Ah, oh, see, it looks like a puffy cloud. I think I was inspired by that to cast this on, but it looks like we got a little bit done. And as you can see, it does have a really nice, just that fuzz that, I mean, it looks like it's coming so far off of the garment. You can't even tell. Sorry. I'll get better at the at the filming, I promise. Slowly but surely, I will get it. All right, y'all. Oh, oh my gosh. It's feeling froggy knits. We gotta walk out. Well, y'all, I hope that you have a wonderful rest of your day wherever you are. And I'm wishing you a happy new year. I hope that it was wonderful and that it's getting off to a good start, just like it is over here at Feeling Froggy Knits. See you in the next one. Oh, next week we're getting real crafty. So stay tuned. Love y'all.